Newton's first law, inertia, and mass. Galileo Galilei came up with a very interesting experiment. It started out as a thought experiment, and then he actually used an apparatus here to verify it. And he said, hey, if I had a ball on a ramp, it would roll down the ramp, and it would roll up the other side. And when it rolled up the other side, it would reach the same position on the other side, the same height that it had initially. And it didn't matter what the shape of the ramp was, that if it was more gradual going up, it would still climb to the original height that it had before, except for maybe some friction that would have reduced how high it could go. But he theorized that it couldn't go any higher than that either. So uh, then he thought, well, what happens if I don't have an opposing ramp? What happens if I let the ball go and it rolls and there's nothing to oppose it? What would the final position be? And so he came to the idea that it would just keep on going. And that kind of led to a concept that he established called inertia. Why don't you pause and note this illustration. Newton's first law. Newton's first law is really a restatement and of uh, Galileo's idea. And Newton said, the vis in sita, which is inertia, is a power of resisting by which every body, as much as it as in it lies, endeavors to preserve its present state, whether it be of rest or of moving uniformly forward in a straight line. Of course, uh, that elegant language can be broken down into uh, our current uh, form of Newton's first law, that is, an object's motion will remain constant if there is no net external force acting on it. And so an object's motion, there are really two states of relative constant motion, and that is a state of rest, where an object's not moving, and also a state of constant velocity, where an object has a constant speed and is moving in a straight line. So please uh, jot this down in your notes. Newton's first law may seem obvious for objects at rest, uh, the idea that an object rest wants to stay at rest, or is it? First, place the crochet hoop on top of the bottle and line up the pen caps so it is directly over the bottle's opening. Place water in the bottle to make it more stable. When you're ready to perform the experiment, use a single finger on the side of the crochet hoop and pull straight horizontally. If you pull slightly up or down, the experiment won't work, so it takes some practice to get it right. That was cool. Uh... And it is pretty intuitive, and we see it an awful lot here on Earth that uh, object, objects at rest really do want to stay at rest. But Newton's first law really is not an easy discovery for moving objects. For moving objects, everything seems to slow down and stop. Because we live on Earth, and Earth has an atmosphere with air, and Earth has surfaces that interact with other objects, we're constantly experiencing friction, or objects are constantly experiencing friction and a drag force due to air resistance or to fluids like water and so forth. And so we have an environment where everything is experiencing an outside or a net force. That's why Newton's first law is so difficult to see. 
except when we go out in space. So, as Galileo knew, and Newton stated so well, forces do not keep objects in motion, they change their motion. What keeps objects in motion is just the concept of inertia. This would be a good thing to note. So, a force is not necessary to keep an object moving. Objects want to keep moving, or they want to stay at rest. So in order to change their motion, a net force is needed. A net external force is what causes acceleration. A net external force is an unbalanced push or pull from an outside source. Please note these ideas before you move on. To understand unbalanced forces, let's take a look at some balanced forces. For example, tug of war. If both members are tugging equally, then there is no acceleration because the forces are balanced. A boat sitting in the water. The weight of the boat is balanced by the buoyant force pushing up on the boat, and so there, the boat doesn't sink. There's no net force and the object stays at rest. Just like a book on a table, the weight of the book is being opposed by the reaction force of the table, which is called the normal force, or the reaction force is creating a normal force here. And so since the forces are balanced, there's no acceleration. You can also have balanced forces and no acceleration, but have an object moving. For example, a car cruising down the road, the driving force uh, created by the car's engines and so forth, is opposed by the air resistance, the drag force, and also friction on the tires and everything. These forces balance the driving force, and the reaction force is balanced by gravity pulling down here, so that the net force acting on this car is zero. But that doesn't mean the car doesn't move, it just means that it moves at a constant speed. Same thing with an airplane. When the weight of the airplane is countered by the lift of the airplane and the thrust of the airplane is countered by the drag force, it doesn't mean the airplane will uh, stop. It means that it will cruise at a constant velocity. These would be good illustrations for your notes. When we're talking about objects that are moving or objects that are, re are at rest, not all objects are the same. For example, uh, it's a lot easier to accelerate and throw a baseball than it would be to throw a bowling ball. It's also a lot easier to walk around in a grocery store with an empty cart and moving it around easily versus when you're at the end of the grocery run and your cart is heaping full. It's also um, a lot easier to change an object's motion. If a bicyclist is coming at you, it's not nearly as scary as if a big rig were coming at you. So a big rig would uh, be a lot harder to change its motion than a bicycle. So taking that into account, inertia must have something to do with mass. So here's our definition of inertia. The resistance of an object to a change in motion. Again, objects want to do what they're already doing. And it should be intuitive that the more massive an object is, the more inertia it has. The harder it is to get it moving or to change its motion. And uh, so the more it resists a change in its motion, the more mass it has. So mass is our quantity for inertia. Please note this. So, mass is our measure of inertia. Unfortunately, 
we have a tough time understanding mass. We usually think in terms of weight. And that's because we live on the surface of the Earth here. And on the surface of the Earth, gravity pulls us down. And so we're const constantly aware of weight. And so naturally things that have more mass also have more weight. So uh, when, I'm, when you're lifting a particular amount of mass here, you feel it a lot more because gravity is pulling down. Now, if you're in outer space, it would still take some effort to move around mass, but you wouldn't be fighting gravity. For example, here, you'd be weightless out in space, just like you were here. So this would truly be lifting and accelerating mass, where this would be lifting and not just accelerating mass, but also opposing gravity while you lift. So mass is different than weight. Mass is a measure of how much force it takes to change an object's motion regardless of gravity. The more force it takes to accelerate an object, the more mass and inertia it has. Therefore, objects even in space have mass and require forces to change their motion. Weight is a force strictly due to gravity and changes depending on where you are at the moment. And so we'll wait for more on weight. But please take these, these pieces of information down in your notes. So back to mass. Mass is our measure of inertia and mass is measured in kilograms represented by the symbol kg. Notice that the base unit is not the gram but the kilogram or 1000 grams. So one kilogram is a thousand grams. Please note these things. How much is a kilogram? Well, a kilogram of mass will produce a gravitational force or weight of about 2.2 pounds. Um, another way to think of it is that a two liter bottle of soda is almost two kilograms, about 1.9 kilograms. Well, how do we keep kilograms as a standard unit? Well, the SI standard kilogram is a platinum iridium cylinder, you can see it right in here, that's stored or kept at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France. So, now we know that mass is measured in kilograms, and mass is a measure of inertia, and inertia is the resistance of an object to a change in motion. So objects want to keep doing what they've been doing. They don't want to change their motion. If something's moving, it wants to keep moving. And if something's at rest, it wants to stay at rest. And if we're going to change their motion, we need to apply a net outside force. We need to unbalance the forces in order to change motion or create acceleration. But I think we've uh, done enough for now. So, Scratch's parting idea. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.